A couple, I don't know when it was, three weeks ago or something, I preached the message called Trouble, Trouble, Trouble. And uh, um, people have been saying, ever since you preached that, it's Trouble, Trouble, Trouble. And uh, so um, I wanted to preach a message tonight to be part two of that. But it's going to be called Trouble for the Right Reasons. Trouble for the right reasons. And uh, there's a few reasons why you can have trouble and uh, why, why you go through trouble. We go through trouble for the right reasons and the wrong reasons. And life itself is trouble. Um, like in the last few weeks or a couple weeks, basements flooding, all that stuff. Trouble. Trouble, trouble, you know, and Jesus said, in this world you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the, re the world. And there's another reason that you get in trouble, and that's for all the wrong reasons. And I want to clarify that today, because a lot of people, you know, they, they, trouble comes in their lives, and they don't really understand why it's happening. And if you read through the New Testament, it's all about, there's trouble all the time. Trouble in the church, trouble, trouble in families, trouble in lives, trouble, <laughs> trouble all the time, continuously. So I want to I talk about those today and I want to give us a better understanding um, where trouble comes from, what it's all about, what the reason is for it. And so we're going to get into that. And I, I've just known ever since I became a Christian, become, be, ever since I come to know Jesus, that there's been trouble. <laughs> you know? We, as a family, um, my, my family that I was born in and stuff like that has been trouble. It's been battles. It's been, it's just been continuous. And, and um, I'm getting to the point where if I haven't got trouble, uh, something's going wrong. You know, I'm starting to feel, uh-oh, what's up? What's up? It doesn't happen too long. It doesn't happen too often But where there isn't. But so... We're going to get into this right away, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 to 11, and I think you're going to be encouraged today. Um, you may, you may not be, you may get mad. That's okay. I'm used to being in mad, people mad, in trouble all the time. doesn't matter if you preach the word of God, you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be a Christian. You know, people, people have told me, you know, having been pastor, pastors, your kids, are, you know, there's going to be trouble. I said, being a Christian, you're going to have trouble. You don't need to be a pastor to have trouble. You're going to have trouble. So don't worry about it. So anyway, I'm going to help you get through it today and give us the understanding because God's ways are not our ways and our ways are not God's ways, right? There's this, it's completely, what we think what we think most of the time is wrong thinking, wrong ways of thinking. It, why, why are things going on the way they are? And so I've just got, a, in the last couple months, last three, last month or so, really a peace has overcome me um, in the midst of this war that we're going on. It's going on in this world. And it's a war. Let me tell you, it's a war going on. But there's a great peace that has come. So let's pray together, pray, uh, and then we'll read the word and then we'll get in together to get, read and understand what the word what we're going to get to here today in Jesus name so pray with me repeat this prayer with me please if you're on the if you're watching this on the internet I want you to repeat this prayer Aiden I want you to repeat this prayer and uh, <laughs> I know you can you're smiling at me back there our associate sound man yes amen amen so you you young ones old ones Middle in, in between ones and alien ones, we want you to pray right now. Dear Lord Jesus, speak to my heart and change my life. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Aiden, you got her, buddy. You did it. Good boy. Amen. Pretty soon he'll be up here preaching. Yeah, once he turns five or six. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I like that. You're here today because of the will of God. Right? And um, 
Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all the saints throughout Achaia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you a patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope, for 7, and our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we uh, despaired even of our life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such deadly peril and he will deliver us us. on him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Amen? And help us by your prayers. As you help us by your prayers then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. So I like how it starts right at the beginning there about the will of God. Christ Jesus, you know, the Apostle Paul is an apostle because of the will of God. You're in this place because of the will of God. But in, in also there in, in verse 1, it talks about the church of God in Corinth together with all the saints throughout all, you know, all Achaia. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2, it says, To the church of God in Corinth to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Amen. And I love that. It's talking about corporate, the corporate unity, the corporate need, the need to be a part of a body. It's talking about there's, there's one church all over the world. There's not apostolic churches there's not catholic churches there's not all this other it's one church it's the church of jesus christ he's the one we worship he's our god he's our magnificent one he's the one we focus on amen there's no you know we don't have to have a million different doctrines that were ba- that were founded on failure which a lot of doctrines are they're they're just there because they they failed and we we failed and we give up on god and just start making up excuses why God didn't work, right? That's why a lot of people quit going to church. You know, oh, God, did it didn't work, so we blame God and we run away from Him instead of figuring it out that God isn't the one that's a problem. We look, have to look in the mirror sometimes and see, face our problem head on, which is us. Directly looking into the mirror, and we can find that there's a lot of proof. But corporate, those those unities, those verses, they talk about corporate unity. And uh, Second Corinthians chapter one verse three says, "Praise be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the the God of all comfort." He's the God of all comfort, and and when you look at that, it's. Really what he's, that word really means he's the God of all encouragement. I, you know, we, we think of, in our culture, we think of comfort. He's the God who supplies the recliners so we can lay down and do nothing. You know, we can use that word. Uh, we want to be comforted. We want to be snuggled. We want to be cuddled and stuff like that. And, and, but he's really, he's the God of all of all. Um, he is the God of compassion. He's the Father of compassion, but he's the, he's the God of encouragement. And that really means he's the God of all encouragement. He, he encourages us to keep going when we're going through trials, when we go through storms, when we go through struggles. He says, keep going. Don't quit. 
Don't quit because things aren't going your way. He's that God. He's that one who does that. But he's also the God who encourages us to change if we are going in the wrong way. He's, well, he's encouraging us. Hey, you're going the wrong way. I should stop going the way you are. And if you don't, if you don't stop going the way you are, you're going to encounter trouble. And this kind of trouble you do not want to encounter because of stupidity. Amen? And it, things are going bad for a lot of people because they're making bad choices. And he, entre- he encourages us to change. And if we don't change, we're going to have nothing but trouble. And, don't, and this is where people blame God for all their trouble because they're having so much trouble when we've made so many dumb, stupid mistakes and some dumb, crazy decisions and we've all done them. Amen? But he's a God of encouragement. He says, okay, even if you have made some mistakes, you've made some bad choices, you can start making the right choices today. Amen? You don't, if you made some bad choices, you don't have to sit there and say, oh, I made some bad choices because the Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And he forgives every sin that we've ever committed if we ask for it and if we repent of it. Amen? And so he forgives. He forgives, he cleanses us and all that. Bad choice. We don't want to be in trouble. We don't want to have trouble. Because of bad choices. We want to have trouble for the right reasons. If there's going to be trouble, we might as well have them for the right reasons. Okay? And so we'll get into that here in a few seconds. Verse 4 says this. Who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble uh, with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So he comforts us. He encourages us. Why? So that we can feel good about ourselves? No, so that we can encourage others. You mean this isn't about me? No, it's not. It's got nothing to do with you. As a matter of fact, you're not even in the equation. <laughs> He's comforting us. And we're, we're not even in the equation. We're just, you just, hey, I'm, t- I'm doing this so that you can be of some use for somebody else. It's not so that you can feel good about yourself, have a great self-image and feel good and do good and all that stuff. It's so that you can encourage others because you have been where they've been. You've been through the storms. You've been through the trials. But this is also talking about the trouble, encouraging people in their troubles for, doing, for being troubled for the right reasons. And we'll get a better understanding of that right away. Some of you think you're crazy right now, but that's okay. He encourages us in our own, our, our troubles so that we can encourage others. It's not so that we can be comfortable and sit on the couch eating popcorn and drinking pop and feeling good about ourselves and bragging about how great we are. It's got nothing to do with that. Let's read in the message, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, one, or th- verse 3 to 5. I like this. Oh, knocked my mic, mic off. It says... Verse 3 to 5, it says, All praise to God and the Father of our Master, Jesus the Messiah, Father of all mercy, God of all healing counsel. He comes along us, un- alongside us when we go through hard times, and before you know it, He brings us alongside someone else who's going through hard times so that we can be there for that person just as God was there for us. We have plenty of hard times. That comes from following the Messiah. But no, but no more so than the good times of his healing comfort. We get the full measure of that too. So right away, he's telling, they're telling us, you know, right, I love that right at the end. It says, we have plenty of hard times. That comes from following the Messiah. But no more so than the good times of his healing comfort. We get a full measure of that too. So whenever we go through bad times, how many have done this? You forgot about every good thing that he's ever done for you. Right? How quick does that happen? In about the first day, as trouble starts coming? You know, you know when, when you first get born again, it seems to be things go, at least they did for me, things didn't go too badly. There was quite a, well, well there, actually there were storms right away. But it just didn't seem as intense back then as it does now. Like it's more continuous and everything. But, but the, we tend to forget the good things that he's done. I like, that's what I like about testimony 
nights or on New Year's Eve when we have, we should do that a couple times a year because I never know what's going on in your guys' life because you don't tell me for one thing. It just looks like everything's the same. And then you get up and testify and all these miracles happen. The great things happen. Remember New Year's Eve, we talked three or four hours or whatever. There was people talking about the great things God did all year. Never said, and I didn't have a clue. I thought, we might as well just, before that, I'm thinking, we might as well pack up and quit because nothing's happening here. You see, that's why, you know, you're, you've been... You've been through battles, you're going through struggles, you're going through trials, you're going through all kinds of things, and you're supposed to be telling people, yeah, I've been through that, but God has delivered me now from that. Because He's awesome, and He's an incredible God, He's merciful, and He's wonderful, and He's, and he's changed my life. But if you don't tell nobody, everybody looks around, oh, nothing going on in this church, everybody looks the same, because you can't see the heart. I can't see your heart. I can't look inside you and see that things are going really good for you or things are going really bad for you. That's the part about being in the body. If your things are going bad, like I talked to my sister many, many times, and, and last, yesterday I said, yeah, let us know when we, you need prayer. And that goes for all of you too. Let us know when you need prayer. Let us know when you're going through a battle so that we can pray because even in a moment in prayer, things can change. You can start feeling the presence of God. You can start feeling the peace of God because your mind just naturally, being a North American or Canadian, we naturally are just negative people. Or am I wrong? You guys, no, I'm not negative. <laughs> Without Jesus, you all are. They just go to the coffee shop. You want to find out if we have a negative culture, just go to the coffee shop. Everybody in there, oh, it's too much rain. It's too dry. It's too, you know, it's too windy. It's too cloudy. It's too sunny. It's too this. It's, too, it's like nothing ever. And it just amazes me. But if we can be, yeah, you know, I used to be like that. And, but hey, I encourage you that, that God is about to do something great in your life. I remember, well, I think it was 04, 05, we had a big killer frost. Uh, I think it was 04, I don't know. Big killer frost in Norway. I mean, it was bad. And I remember one guy in particular. The bumper crops, too. They were beautiful crops. Awesome crops. And uh, looked like the best crops for cut a few years and just froze solid, you know. And so everything was feed and all that stuff. And this one guy said to me, he says, you know, the miracle was not the bumper crops. The miracle is going to be God getting us through all this stuff. And you know what? Everybody that I know that suffered through the frost that year are still going strong. They're still farming. They're still paying. They've had bumper crop after bumper crop. Nobody remembers when they go back, oh, that frost, that was horrible. But somehow they made it through and they have this thing that, oh, you know, it, well, it's just one of those things. But God did. It was a miracle. It was a miracle because God brought him through some disasters. You know, in southern Saskatchewan here, you guys have way more disasters than we do up north. You got grasshoppers and sawflies and all kinds of stuff down here we never even heard of. You know, I, when, I, when I was combining for Ross and... and uh, and unloading peas in the shear pin is broke, bre breaking on the unload auger because there's so much, go uh, so much um, grasshopper guts in the, in the grain that it just, it's just seizing everything up. I, we never had to do that. It was, we never had to struggle with that in, in northern Saskatchewan or central Saskatchewan. And, and everybody here, just, oh, it's just part of it. You just got to live with those gophers. Or with those, uh, uh, come on, I'm saying gophers. But that's another problem, yeah. <laughs> Gophers, you know, we have the odd gopher up there, but here it's like there's herds and herds and herds. But, 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 hey? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> but anyway, and so, so, um, but it's that encouraging. Yeah, we've been through that, but we're going to live through that. Yeah, we've been through trials, but we're going to live through that. And the people of God should be able to say this regularly instead of, instead of joining in on the complaints. So, no, God's going to get us through it. 
God's going to get us through. We're supposed to join, join together and, and with the people, you know, those people that don't know God, say, yeah, hey, God's going to get us through. It's going to be a miracle. You wait and see. You wait and see. You'll be around next year. You wait and see, you know. And, and usually it's the case, and, well, there's things happen because people make bad decisions and, and all that kind of stuff too. But, but, you know, for the most part, people are going to get through. All the rain this year are going to get through, Right? We can get through. Yeah, I, I like I like that the Willows Dam is full. When we first come here, there was a, a shortages of water. I never heard of a shortage of water before, so that was a problem. So anyway, we're going to get through, and so we can't forget about the good. And when we're going through the bad, it's hard. It's you know, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. We get the hard. It's hard, and we forget about the blessings. How God got us through. There's people been here that have been through tremendous miracles in life. You wonder, how are we going today? How is things going the way we are? You know, and you're going to look back on your trials and your struggles and say, how did we get through that? And there you remember, oh, of course, what a stupid question. God got us through that. Yeah. What, how do we ever get through that? You know, how many times we we do that? And, and I think back and, you know, when, and when we moved from... Uh, Red Lake to Regina, I, I think of that, how, how it was, we, we didn't have any income, and it was amazing, we had this big debt, and we had no income, and Shelly was making $250 a, um, every two weeks, clear though, <laughs> you know. but, but, but and I was getting no offerings, I'm preaching every week, I'm getting no offerings, like zero, zero, I'm like, what is going on here, and, and, and then somehow by the end of that year we were in the best financial shape we were after making eighty, ninety thousand dollars a year for years where we couldn't get nowhere and we step into the will of God and we do what we're supposed to do and all of a sudden he just starts bringing that you know the increase it's amazing it doesn't make any sense and I look back I think back of that we have some bad days now and all the, you see all the bad right in front of you oh it's so bad it's so bad and then Oh, yeah, well, this isn't bad, you know, compared to what we've been through. And so, anyway, verse 5 uh, says this, For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. So you're, what, what he's saying here is he, we're going to have to go through the same things that Jesus went through to be a Christian. It's not... We're going to have to go through disappointment. We're going to have to go through rejection. We're going to have to go through people abandoning us. You're going to have to go through that. You're going to have to go. Sometimes there's going to be times where you're all alone. You're the only one left. (laughs) Really? I'm serious. You know, maybe, hopefully it's not going to happen here. But, you know, there might be a time where you get backed in the corner and you're the only one that's battling. You know, you're going to have to go through persecution. You're going to have to go through the same troubles that Jesus had to go through. You had to, you're going to have to suffer for doing right. I don't want to sign up for that. Well, I've got good news or bad news for you then. You're going to have to suffer for doing wrong, too. And that suffering, you are on your own. (laughs) Been there. (laughs) You're on your own. Because everybody bails on you then. At least when you're with a body of believers like this, things are going wrong. There's always people that are, I have the best friends in my life I've ever had in my life in this community, in this church, in this body of believers. We have, this is the first time in my life I've covenanted for life together with people. You know, never before. Your friends that are, you, you know, everybody thinks, oh, my high school friends, there's the best. You know, I thought, you know, all these guys I hung around with all my life. Oh, you know, when I was growing up, we were together every day. I thought, oh, yeah, they're going to be, we're going to be there forever. Put the bottle of whiskey away and that's it for that. <laughs> All your friends disappear overnight. Oh, they were really solid people. (laughs) Solid friends. They cared so much for us, you know. 
uh, you know, and when trouble come, there was they were nowhere to be found. You know, when friends start dying and stuff like that, and where are they? They're nowhere to be found. Because they don't want anything to do with the right kind of trouble. The same trouble Jesus had, the same trouble that Paul had. I got a real encouraging uh, word here in First Peter chapter 3. Verse 14 to 17 says, But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. <coughs> if you are suffered for what is right, you are blessed. Okay? And then it says, Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. So this is where Christianity really gets exciting because you just become, you get the Spirit of God and you fear just disappears all of a sudden. The things you used to fear, don't fear no more. Anxiety, depression, all that stuff begins to fall off. You know, and, and worry. Oh, anybody worry in this place? Jesus said you're not supposed to. <clears throat> That's a hard thing to get, get over, but you can do it. But it, verse 15 says, But uh, in your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you <clears throat> to give the reason for your hope that you have. But do this with gladness or with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. <laughs> and so here's my, one of my favorite verses. It says, it's, if it's, it is better if it's God will, God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. So he's telling us right there, you're going to suffer for either doing good or for doing evil. Either one. I want to suffer. If I'm going to suffer, I want to do it for the right reasons. Suffering for the right reasons. Suffering for the <coughs> kingdom of God. For advancing the kingdom of God. See, people are suffering for all the wrong reasons. Making bad choices, doing stupid things. You know, and we've all done them. Everybody, did anybody here that never done anything dumb? Because I'd like to meet you. I want to get your autograph after our signal, you know, and a picture of you so I can put you on. See, there's somebody that's in the same, same boat as Jesus. Yeah. yeah. Never done anything wrong ever in their lives. So the bad news is you can't comfort anybody. <laughs> you can't encourage anybody. Because you're so good, you can't encourage anybody. I don't, be, I don't want to be like those heathens over there, like the tax collector, or the Pharisee. The Pharisee that was praying and the tax collector, and Jesus is looking at them, <coughs> and this one Pharisee's praying, I'm so glad I'm not like the rest of these people. I'm so glad I'm not like the tax collector. I'm so glad I'm not like the prostitute. And, and, and they're just so glad they're, they're better than me. Or better them. They're just a better person than anybody else. And then there's a tax collector over here. And he's pounding on his chest and he's beating. And he's saying, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said, that man's uh, prayer is more justified than the guy over there that's bragging about himself. Um, so, now we're in verse 6 of, of, of Second Corinthians. And we get, start getting into the meat of it. It says, if we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. So you're going to be in distress for doing the right things. You're going to be in distress. You're gonna, it's, it's so that you can comfort. Again, it talks about so that you can comfort, so that you can encourage. And it's for you and your salvation. So it's telling people that there's a hope for you. There's a hope. You can, you can do this. It's for you. Or it's for other people. You mean you go through all the suffering. You know, again, we think about it. Read it again. It's right there. You go through all the suffering and you're not even considered. It's got nothing to do for you. It's so that you can comfort somebody else. So that you can encourage somebody else. You can tell them that you can get through this because we know we've been there. Amen? And when you put yourselves up on the front line, when you stand up for what is right, you are going to go for tr through trials. Most people back off because the trials come. Oh, trials, this must be not the right thing. 
But if you read the Bible, you find out you're going to go through these troubles, you're going to go through this suffering. And, and doing the right thing causes personal distress so that you can bring healing deliverance to others. You're going to go through distress so that you can bring healing deliverance for others. But what about me? It, you don't count. Sorry. All that matters is God and people. Our God. And all that matters is Jesus and people. Amen? And that's it. Oh, people, there you go. If you're self-centered, you're not going to like that one. If you're looking at the mirror and thinking about yourself all the time, it's, you're not going to like that one. If you're a religious hypocrite, you're not going to like that one. Because it's like, isn't this all about me? I just want to. I just want to soak in the in the presence of God all by myself, so I can separate myself from this evil world, and not have anything to do with anybody. I just want just me and God. You're not going to be any good for nothing. It's not for just you and God. It's for God and others. Amen. Okay. Don't be so excited. Okay. Read this now in, in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. In the message it says, When we suffer for Jesus, it works out for your healing and salvation. If we are treated well, given a helping hand and encouraging word, that also works for your benefit, spurring you on, face forward, unflinching. Your hard times are also our hard times. When we see that you're just as willing to endure the hard times as to enjoy the good times, we know that you're going to make it, no doubt about it. Amen. Hallelujah. And so that's when you can start to see that people are getting spiritually mature. That you're going to make it because you're, winning, you're getting through. And that's an encouragement to anybody else that's in the body of Christ. It's, I, I hate preaching and preaching and wondering, are they ever going to get it? And then people start changing. I'm going to endure, and it becomes. And then you encourage one another. You, that's when you become a unit. That's when you become strong. That's when you really bring hope to everybody around you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so go through it so that we can make it. When you're going through it, we know that you're going to make it also. This is great. You're doing it. You're confident. You're not complaining. You're not whining. You're not crying. Then verse 8 says, uh, in the NIV, it says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Even of life. They despaired even of life. Far beyond their ability to endure. Far, and I can encourage you right now, go far beyond your ability, what you can accomplish in your own mind. What you can accomplish for the kingdom of God. Go beyond, far beyond your ability. I'm far beyond my ability. I'm in something that's far beyond my ability to even do. Being a pastor of a church. I have no ability to do this on my own. At all. None. I come in, and this is one thing I never wanted to do in my life. So I've, I've been pushed beyond my ability. And uh, that's what God wants us to do as a people. You know, He just doesn't want us just to um, be able to resist the party on a weekend. He wants us to be life-changing to other people. He wants us to be the, the peer pressure to the world. Pressure them to come to the king. And so the, not, be, not pressure them because telling them they're dirty, rotten sinners, but pressuring them and say, hey, God has a plan for you. He's changed my life. He brought me through the trials. He's brought me through the storms. We need to have the atmosphere that if people walk in here and they, they, we're the people of God, they walk in here and they feel, hey, there's hope. There's hope for me. There's hope. There's hope. I could, you know, that, that s instead of beating people over the head with a sledgehammer, so you, you, can, you got to hope because if God could set me free, you can be free too. Amen? And so when we look at this, we're, it talks about trouble. We're, we're going to have trouble. So if you want to be a Christian, I got news for you, you're going to have trouble. If you don't want to be a Christian, you want to be a, then you're going to have trouble. 
In that kind of trouble, you're going to have trouble all the time, nonstop, every level. And every time you have trouble, it's going to be a mole, a mole you're going to turn a molehill into a mountain. Every, you're going to be addicted to stress, or addicted, addicted to strife. Every little, little molehill you come and follow, trip over, oh, God, I can't get over that mountain. It's six inches high. So step over it. That's not a mountain. But when you serve the king, you see great big mountains in front of you. Well, that's nothing. My king made that. So he's got to give me the ability to go over it. There's a whole difference. It's all about attitude. It's all about thinking. What is trouble? Why are you having trouble? And why, you know, what is God up to when we're in the midst of trouble? What's really going on? In verse 9, here, you've got to read this very carefully. It says, Indeed, in our hearts we felt sentenced to death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but God who raises the dead. All this stuff happens so that we will not rely on ourselves. The deeper and the more trouble we get in because of the kingdom of God, the more, the more pressure that you're under, it happens so that you, you know, you're being delivered from self-reliance and you don't even know it. That's why there's trouble. God wants to deliver you from self-reliance so that you can say, hey, we would have never got through any of this had it not been for God. You become, you, you're not self-reliant anymore. When, as a matter of fact, the more you get into the kingdom of God, God starts telling you to do things you know that are impossible. You know, it's never, it's never, been, never been done for a sinner boy to become everybody in the community to become born again, but I believe it's possible through God. And so I could have a hundred people come up to me and give me a hundred different reasons why that statement is not correct. And they even give me scripture too, for it too. But I say that with God, all things are possible. Amen? <laughs> and we, we can't do that on our own. You know, you can't change a single person on your own. Yeah, I'm going to just talk to that person till they change. Well, they're not going to change. They're never going to change on their own unless God intervenes. I learned early as a, as a pastor, about the first week into the pastor, that when Sienna went through what she went through, I knew right there, there's nothing I can do to help this girl. On my own, this is not possible. And it was rough, let me tell you. And it was all, you know, it was, it was an attack of the devil, there's no question about it. But we went through it, and we, the only way we got through it was through God. Because of God. He looked back. She never ate for five months. You know, think about that. That's nasty. But I learned right away, hey, there's nothing I can do to change her. So you got to get in pray. You got to get, you have to really get, begin to pray, learn how to pray, learn how to turn, really, really how to not become self-reliant because the one you love, if you, the one that you raised in your own house, if you can't help change them, what, what can you do really to pass? And then pastors, you see that the problem with most churches is that churches think they're going to get a pastor so that we can have this wonderful group and you can, be, we're all, you can, do, you can do nothing wrong and all that stuff. You know, he's going to do everything for us. He's going to visit every person in the whole church and, and he's going to go and cut grass for everybody. He's just going to make a happy, one big happy family. And he's going to take all of my problems away. No, Jesus has to do that. Jesus is the one that's got to heal you. Jesus is the one that's got to deliver you. All we can do is point in the right direction to the cross, <laughs> to Jesus, Right? So I can't do that for you. I can't, I can't quit drinking for you. I can't quit smoking dope for you. I can't, I, can't, I can't get rid of any of your addictions, but Jesus can. I can point you to one. I, I know that he can do it because he did it for me. Right? I was addicted to alcohol, tobacco, everything under the sun that was wrong. My life was wrong. I did things wrong. I suffered for doing wrong things. But now to suffer for doing right is all worth it. It's all, and it's this and that very to teach us. You know, verse 9, let's read that again. 
<coughs> Indeed, in our hearts we felt sentenced to death, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raises the dead. <coughs> Isn't that good? So it's to teach us deliverance from self-reliance. That's what he's up to. <coughs> and that's why most people fail, is because they want to be self-reliant. They don't want anybody to tell them what they should be doing, what they shouldn't be doing. They don't want God. They don't want God. I'm going to do it my way. I did it my way. Yeah. And have fun. Have fun when you're all by yourself because you did it your way. Trouble for the right reasons. For the kingdom of God. To break self-reliance. Are you in trouble because you, you, um, you don't want to be in the will of God you're going to be in trouble you're, I guarantee you're going to be in trouble because you're running from God you don't want to be in the will of God you don't want to pick up the pace you're going to be in trouble let's look at in the message here again I think it's 8 and 9 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 chapter 1 <clears throat> it says we don't want you to be in the dark friends about how hard it was when all this came down on us in Asia province it was so bad that we didn't think we were going to make it. We felt like we'd been sent to death row. That, is, that it was all over for us. It was all over for us. As it turned out, it was the best thing that could have ever happened. Instead of trusting in our own strength or wits to get out of it, we were forced to trust God totally. Not a bad idea since he's the God who raises the dead. Amen? That's good. I like that. He's the God who raises... It's not a bad idea to serve this God because He's the God who raises the dead. Amen? And there's lots of people listening on the internet right now that don't even believe that God can raise the dead. You know, and, and, and there's a lot of people that go to churches that don't... People tried to convince me for years that, that God doesn't heal anymore. They still try to, but we don't listen to them. We don't, I, I don't argue with them. I don't have time. And so in verse 10 and 11, it said, He has delivered us from such deadly peril, and He will deliver us. On Him we have set our hope, and He will continue to deliver us. As, as you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. And, and so when you stop relying on yourself stop relying and become totally God reliant trouble stops according to that he's delivered us from such deadly peril and he'll do it again and again and again and again and again relying on the resurrection if you are spiritually mature you will become God reliant God reliant you see, people get in trouble because they do stupid things and then they blame God. That really irritates me to no end. You know, somebody, you know, somebody dies, and or dies of a drug overdose, and how could God have let that happen? Well, he didn't. Self-reliant people let it happen. We don't need God. We don't need to listen to anybody. We don't need anybody. We, we're just... We, you know, we're self-reliant. We're just tough. We're strong. We're going to get through this together. Well, you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to end up in hell. That's the only place you're going to get. Self-reliance is a deadly, deadly thing. And we need to be reliant on the king. To get into position, you go so deep with God that the only one that can deliver you is Jesus, our God. Amen? As, you know, really think about that. It's so easy to go with the flow of society, isn't it? That's the easiest thing there is. Anybody can do that. But when you start serving God, this is what happens. All hell begins to come against you. You're just flowing down that river with everybody else. It's just easy. No persecution, no trial, you think. <laughs> Till the rug gets pulled out from under you and you're laying in the ditch, in the muck, in the mire and, and crying, oh, where's God, where's God, where's God? 
self-reliant. This church is winning. You know, we don't need God. We got a good congregation. There's lots of churches that say we got a good congregation. All our needs are being met. We're not, we're not stirring up any, any waves or nothing like that. Well, you don't want to be a part of a church like that. You don't want to be a part of the The enemy better know about the Sinaboy Absolute Church, I think. Right? We say, some people, don't speak too loud. You'll wake the devil up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> he should know us. I, I, I think all over hell, there's posters up. Terry Severson wanted dead. <laughs> or alive. One way, one way or the other, just get, deceive him, destroy him, do whatever you have to, but kill him. Or is your poster, he's mine, down in hell. That's mine. You know? But Jesus, you know, I want, I want to be the one. That one that all hell, when you, they hear your name, they hear the, the name of, of, see the body of believers in this in the boy. Where they begin to tremble because not because of us, but because the name of Jesus is being lifted high. We're worshiping the King and standing firm. People that you know, they, there's people that think that Christianity is a crutch. It's a crutch. There's ah, oh, you, you got to have your crutch and all that stuff. No, it is not a crutch. You think it's a crutch? You carry this thing around for a while. Go walk around town and see what kind of crutch this is. If you got the guts, take it through your school. Walk through your school. Carry a Bible. Walk through your school. See, see what kind of crutch this is. <laughs> if you got the guts. <laughs> or a big football player, college football player. He's a big guy. Offensive lineman. And he used to walk around he, with a Bible, and, and that's what one guy told him. He says, ah, oh, you're a wimp just carrying that Bible around. He says, here, you carry it around for a while. See what kind of wimp you are. You see, a lot of people won't. They're scared. Scared to show this. Scared, you know, we, we sang that song tonight, we will not be ashamed. I'm not ashamed to serve the king. I'm not ashamed of him. I'm not ashamed of the one who's the, the he's the deliverer of all mankind. Like he is the most incredible. Like he ain't scared of nobody. Jesus has no fear. But you know what the Bible says? Oh, yes, the devil, or people say, oh, the devil is so scary. The Bible says that the devil trembles even at the sound of his name, of Jesus' name. He just whispered that name and he trembles. He trembles. And oh, the devil's so, everywhere. even Christians are so scared of the devil. Smith Wiggles, I like Smith Wigglesworth's attitude. He woke up one night, the devil was at the foot of his bed. He's at, the devil's there, he's at the foot of his bed, and he woke up, he looked at the end of his bed, and there he was, there he was, the devil. And Smith says, oh, it's only you. And he rolled over and went back to sleep. <laughs> I like that. That's attitude. Attitude. Amen? Amen. The power of God attitude God is good all the time amen the deliverer so trouble if you're having trouble because you serve the king that's a good kind of trouble to be in and if you keep pushing through keep getting pressing into the things of God he's going to deliver you you're going to find out at the end that it wasn't anything to do with you you're not self-reliant you're not all on your own you're not going to be the hero I just hate when people get up and start testifying about how awesome their sin was and how great they are and all that stuff and they go on forever and ever about their sin and all that stuff. It's like God is... The, but when Jesus is magnified, His name is magnified, His name is glorified, we can't do nothing. Jesus says without Him we can do nothing. We can't do a single thing without Him. Nothing! <laughs> you know, He... It's amazing. I was talking to um, a brother in the Lord yesterday, and I said, isn't that an amazing thing? Even in the midst of my rebellion, God was keeping me alive. Even in the midst of people's rebellion all over this town, 
He's keeping people alive so that they can have, uh, so that somebody can come up to them and give them some hope. Give them some hope. You know, there's so many sick people in this town, we need to, we need to really begin to start taking some chances. Start praying for people. Start going into the places where nobody wants to go and just start praying. And people that are terminally ill, we need to go to just pray and start taking some chances. Well, what if they don't get healed? Well, you know, what if they don't get healed? They're going to die. Right? They're going to die. And so, what if they get healed? That's a good thing, right? Amen? So, and again, the thing is that what makes it so powerful is that we are not self-reliant. We can't do it on our own. Right? Who does the healing? Jesus. Nobody else. He's the healer. Don't become so. So if you're having trouble, good. Amen? People, oh, you know, it's trouble. God will get you through the trouble. And He will and everything. But if you're having trouble because you're dumb, it's not, you know, you really got to reevaluate that. Amen? So let's stand.